Hi everyone, in this video we're going to be talking about how to generate a $12 cost per lead in Microsoft Ads. We're going to be touching on campaign structure, how we optimize to get it this low, and why we use Microsoft Ads as a whole, right? Um, but before we jump in, please don't forget to like and subscribe. It really helps grow our channel and put out better content. Um, so we can just jump right in. So this is our performance from yesterday, right? We drove, we spent about 50 bucks and got four leads for $12 cost per acquisition. However, in the first week of this campaign, we didn't see these numbers. We saw about a $70 cost per lead, right? Um, so actually $98 cost per lead. What we were able to do with this channel, right, is we went live, we got a bunch of data, and we pulled our search term and keyword report, and actually were able to filter them out by what's working, what's not working, how do we add more negatives, and how do we um, add more keywords that are driving good success as actual keywords, right? Because then if you actually start to look at this campaign and then you look at the next week, the next few days, it starts at 98, it drops to 65, and then, you know, yesterday and, you know, Monday and Tuesday, we're showing that it's a $17 CPA, and then yesterday, as I saw showed earlier, $12 CPA. So this campaign is just continually going down in cost per lead because of the optimizations that we're making on a daily basis, right? So if you just hit CPA in the last month since we went live, that thing is just continually driving down, whereas our spend is going up, right? So in this situation, we can bring spend up while bringing cost per lead down, and that really leads to just an, a lead generation machine here, right? So let's go into the campaigns and actually show you how we're structuring these campaigns. So basically, I have two sets of campaigns, and they're identical, um, except for match type, right? So they're targeting the same geo. That, so in this example, we were bidding on basically mortgage lending terms um, into three products, first-time home buyer products, uh, Vet, VA products and down payment assistant products. Um, but when you look at these campaigns, we've got a phrase match and an exact match. The reason why we do not consolidate our match types is because it gets us, gives us a lot less control, right? So in an exact match campaign, um, you know, we're really only getting the exact phrase that we're uh, targeting or small variations, right? Whereas in phrase, we're getting a lot outside of what we're targeting. In this example, if you are bidding on mortgage lender, you might get mortgage bank in my area, right? Um, a lot of times, you know, with the way the new variant matches are with phrase and Microsoft, you're going to get a lot outside and that can be good and that can be bad, right? So what you have to do is you have to be able to pull that data and see what you want to negate and what you want to add as a keyword, right? So phrase is going to give you a lot of keyword expansion. Exact is going to get you a lot more control and higher quality lead. Um, you know, with that said, Generally, exact is, might have a little bit higher CPLs or CPAs, right? If we look at the last few days, um, our phrase match is driving a $7 cost per lead. So if we look at just yesterday, whereas our exact match was a $17 cost per lead, right? Both are really low and really effective, um, but you just want to make sure you're going into your CRM and really determining what is driving ROI, right? Okay, so now that we understand the basic campaign structure, how we're segmenting these campaigns, now let's go into the keywords and the search terms to see what's really driving success, right? So we're going to go into our search terms right here. And the difference between keywords and search terms is that your keywords are essentially what you're targeting, right? I'm targeting mortgage lender. Your search terms are what people are actually searching, right? So we're going to actually pull this report for the last month. Um, and we're going to export this into a spreadsheet. And this is where a lot of our optimization is really going to come from. We're going to be able to pivot the data and see what is generating results and what isn't. And I'm going to show you exactly how we do that. Okay, so once you've been able to download the report, you know, we're going to actually go into the spreadsheet, manipulate it to see what keywords and what search terms are driving success and what are not, right? So the first thing to do over here is we're going to actually filter this by spend. Um, largest to smallest, and then we're going to highlight this in conditional format, hit, um, you know, whatever color scale works for you, right? Ultimately, we want to understand what's spending a lot and what's spending very little. Um, the second key over here is going to be scrolling to the right, highlighting our CPA, um, conditional format, and basically do the same thing, right? Again, we wanted to see what is driving zero, which means zero leads. 
um, or really high, um, and also what's driving lower cost per leads, right? And then we're going to highlight all of these cells right here and just hide them for now just so we can get a good idea on like what's generating results for our business. Okay, so as we can see, you know, this keyword right here, it's driving the highest spend, but no cost per acquisition, no lead. So we're going to highlight this in red. Um, and you're basically going to go through this and just highlight um, red for negative keyword, green for positive keyword. And you're also going to take into account this column right here because it's going to be telling you, do we have this added already? Do we have it excluded? Um, you know, do we even need to worry about re-adding this to the campaign or is this something we just need to pause because it's a keyword, right? Um, so we're going to run through this. So, uh, you know, this other keyword we're going to highlight in red. Right now I'm basically doing anything that is above $10 that hasn't driven a lead we're going to negate. Because again, remember, our goal is to get this to a $12 cost per lead. Um, you know, even in some cases, we saw $7 cost per lead. Now that you've been able to find really quickly what isn't working, let's go through and see what is working, right? So, so right here we have a keyword that has a $7 cost per lead and yet is not added to our campaign, right? So we're going to actually highlight this in yellow um, to show the distinction between, right, what's good and what's not good. So this keyword is a $1 uh, cost per lead um, and it is added, which is great. We're still going to highlight this just so we kind of get an idea in this exercise on how to find what's working. Um, we're going to scroll down three dollar 68 keyword um, that's amazing right isn't added as well so this is opportunity to add these keywords directly to our exact match campaigns um, and generate really lower cost per leads um, highlight this one okay here's another one so this is basically what we did in the first two weeks to get the the cost per lead down from ninety dollars to about twelve dollars and even seven dollars in some cases right so now that you have, you know, just a basic idea, we're going to actually filter this by or sort this by our color so we can kind of get them all right next to each other. Um, and we're going to put a hard line down here so we can separate the positive from the negative. Right. So just go down here and hit thick bottom. OK. Something that a lot of people forget to do here when you're adding these search terms to your negative keywords or to your actual keywords is they just throw them at all in as just broad, right? But what happens is that if you throw your negative keywords, right, these red into as a broad match, you're going to have terrible negative keyword con conflict, right? So first time buyer mortgage is going to actually conflict against pretty much any keyword that has mortgage in it, right? So if you change this to an exact variation, you're only going to negate first time buyer mortgage searches, right? And the way we do this is just by adding a really easy formula, right? So we're going to put our brackets down here and then our, our right bracket and our left bracket. And then we're just going to concatenate this um, using an ampersand. So we're going to hit B2, add the ampersand, a2, add that other ampersand, and then C2 and hit enter. And see what that's automatically going to do. It's going to bring this together um, really in a simple exact match variation. And then you're going to just highlight these cells, scroll them down, um, scroll them up a bit. There we go. And you're going to see all of your keywords right here that you need to um, you know, either add or negate. And it makes it really easy, right? Again, I'm using about six keywords, but I use this with hundreds and sometimes even thousands of variations to very easily find what's working and what's not working, right? And again, you look over here at this conditional formatting and you can really see, you know, we've got our great CPAs here and then boom, that hard line zero. There's nothing here that we really want to add. Um, so the next exercise is really going to be highlighting these and adding them directly in the platform. So now that we have these keywords, um, we're going to highlight these, copy them, and go back to our campaign and our in our exact match campaign into the ad group that they belong in, and really just add these as you know keywords, right? So hit keywords. We're going to go into our ad groups that they belong in, and hit add right here and drop it in and then you're going to hit save right um, i already added those in before this video but i wanted to kind of just show briefly that process the second key is going to be going to our tools and then our negative keywords 
So negative keywords is going to be under shared libraries. We use lists. There's a few different ways to do this, right? You can add them just straight to the campaign, or you can add them in lists and then apply the list to multiple campaigns. I generally lean more on the negative keyword lists because it really helps us scale our keywords um, that we know are not going to work across multiple campaigns. All right, so we're going to go into our mortgage irrelevant campaign because that's where these belong. We're going to hit add, go back to our negative keyword lists, copy these over and drop them in and then save, right? And then just to make sure this, this list is actually added to your campaign, you're gonna go back to our campaign and to our negative keyword list and make sure that the mortgage irrelevant lives there, right? So hit negative keyword lists under keywords. All right, so we've got our negative keyword list applied to our campaigns. Um, perfect, so now we are negating the keywords we don't want, to want and we are adding the keywords that are driving results. And that's really a great way to fuel this campaign. Um, stopping you know, the searches that you don't like that are driving higher costs and adding the searches that are working really well, right? And targeting them a little bit more granularly. Overall, there's a lot of ways to optimize these campaigns, right? But what I have found with Microsoft Ads is that the quicker you can understand the search terms report, understand negative keywords, the easier you're going to get these CPAs and the quicker you're going to get these CPAs low, right? Once your cost per lead is in a strong place, right? So about, you know, 30 days of data generally and a CPA or CPL that you can afford, that is when you're going to go into your settings and change this to automated bidding. Right now we're manual bidding, right? So we, um, we're manually bidding on our, on our keywords, on our locations, on our devices, right? Once you've given enough data to Microsoft and you have a cost per lead that you like, you can switch this over to from enhanced CPC to target CPA and then basically let this thing just run on an automated solution where it's targeting your keywords, you know, without the, or with the negative keywords in place, at your allotted CPA or CPL, and then that thing is just running really smoothly, right? You know, dri driving seven to twelve dollar cost per leads every given day, right? D day in and day out, um, and really, like ultimately, like this is really the future of search, right? You can use the same technique in Google as well. The nice thing about Microsoft is that with lower CPCs, like a one dollar cost per click, um, you can scale this a lot quicker um, depending on your market and depending on your product or service. Uh, but overall, you know, thank you for watching this video. If you like this type of content, please like, subscribe, and comment, and we'll see you on the next one.